Congratulations, challenge. Hello and welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Bugs and Glitches tier list. Now as you may know, this is Que Gran Juego, a really great game that they definitely bug tested and quality controlled before releasing it and selling it to the public. So today we're going to talk about 46 bugs and glitches. And by the way, I was generous because I could have put more, but I decided to condense them so that the game would seem more complete. Uh, I made custom icons for all of these bugs and glitches so you can play a little game with yourself and try to guess what the glitches are before we actually talk about them. Obviously when we actually do I'll explain what they are so hopefully by the end of this all of these icons will make sense. Don't accuse me of being lazy okay, small indie streamer makes custom graphics. While describing the glitches, I will either show footage uh, off to the side uh, to complement what I'm talking about, or uh, if the glitch is major enough or requires it, I'll just cut to footage of the actual glitch uh, as it happened to me, because most of these happened to me during my playthrough. Now, if you're a viewer of the channel, you might have noticed that there's about six hours of stream highlights. They're not stream highlights. They're not even stream lowlights. It's six hours of glitches and jank. There is that much to actually talk about with this game. It is appalling the state this was released in. And speaking of being a viewer of my channel, if you're watching this video, it is almost certainly because you've watched either one of my glitch videos or one of my tier list videos. And thanks to this great game, we can do both at once. Dual type tier list, finally. So let's talk about the actual tiers. I've prepared four of them here. At the top, we've got game breaking positive. So these are bugs that actually affect the gameplay, but they help you. Under that, we have game breaking negative. So these are bugs that actually affect the gameplay, but they hurt you. Under that, we have visual fun, where it's just a visual or audio bug, doesn't actually affect the game, uh, but it kind of makes you snicker warms the cockles of your heart and under that we have visual sad where it's a visual or audio bug that doesn't affect the gameplay but it's just kind of pathetic and it makes you regret spending money on the game which i did so here's your disclaimer that all of the bugs i'm going to talk about at least the ones that happened to me happened on official hardware okay not emulated so don't use that for your Game Freak apologetics, okay? This is on official Switch hardware, on an official copy of the game. I also want to say that, in a way, all of these bugs are positive because the bugs are the best part of the game. Uh, I would probably give the game a 3 out of 10, as it currently is, and if they patched all of the bugs, I would give it a 2, because the game would actually be worse. As of the recording of this tier list, there has been one patch, uh, which has fixed 3.5 of the glitches here. I'll explain as we talk about the glitches themselves. Now, these glitches aren't exactly ordered, uh, except for the first two. I put these at the beginning for a reason. And I've also tried to contain the spoilers at the very end. So some of these do require me to show footage from the final area of the game. And I'll give you a spoiler warning before I actually show you those. But here's a heads up. 
that throughout some of these, I might have to show non-story spoiler visual footage of the final area. People say it's the best part of the game. I kind of agree, but I don't really think it's that much of a spoiler just to see what the area looks like because it's not that exciting. So there's your light warning, but I'll give you a, another serious warning before I show you the actual story cutscenes at the end. Did they ever fix the memory leak in SV? That's a good place to start because that is the very first bug we're going to talk about. So this game, Scarlet and Violet, has what's called a memory leak, uh, which is probably one of the worst things that can happen to your game. So I'm not a programmer, but a memory leak basically means that the game doesn't properly clear assets that it no longer needs. So for example, if you enter a building, which happens very rarely in this game, I counted, I think there are 10 buildings you can actually go into in the entire game. If you enter a building, there's no point in the game loading all of the assets for the outside world, right? So the game's supposed to get rid of them and then pull them when it actually needs to show them to you. However, this game, because it has a memory leak, doesn't properly delete everything, which means that the longer you play the game, the more junk data accumulates, and it starts to sort of slow the game down and cause all sorts of issues. I'm not sure exactly how many of the issues can be attributed directly to the memory leak, but some of them can be, and it probably, in the background, affects a lot of these. So I give the memory leak uh, the award for best supporting actor. We're gonna definitely put this in game breaking negative, uh, but this icon uh, is showing slow bro in generation one using amnesia. And unfortunately this game does not have amnesia. It doesn't forget properly. And this is also a very intentionally chosen image because unrelated to the memory leak or possibly related to it, who knows? Uh, during a terror raid battle, some of the text bugged out, and when I tried to use a cheer, uh, the player just said slow bro. Great cheer. <laughs> Great game! There is a way to negate the effects of the memory leak. Because the memory leak gets more severe the longer you play, uh, if you close the game and restart it, it'll reset the counter on the memory leak. Now, you can either do this by choice, or the game can do it for you. No prizes for guessing what this icon means. This game crashes. A lot. <laughs> so the Video Game Awards just happened. My personal favorite game of the year would be Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Bet you would have never guessed that. Now that's a much more ambitious uh, open world game on the Nintendo Switch. I played that game for about 130 hours uh, and I had one and a half crashes. So I crashed once, like actually the software closed. And another time, there was a really long loading screen, which I thought was a crash, so I reset the game. Uh, but then I got to the scene again, and it's just a really long loading screen, so one and a half crashes. In comparison, I played this game, Scarlet and Violet, for I think about 40 hours? Uh, and I crashed seven times. <laughs> And I'm going to show you them now, although you're only going to see six because one crash was off stream when I hatched a Dunsparce. It's just too powerful. How do I link with you? We're already friends, right? Poke portal, is this it? Where's the music? It was a portal to the Shadow Realm, I guess. At least there's autosave, right? First crash of the game. Oh, we have the graphic ready for that, right? He can go right over the Game Freak logo. <laughs> what a great game. I hope we didn't lose that much progress. We had autosave on, right? What? Why were we so disappointed there? I know why we were disappointed. Guys, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Was autosave on? I think so. I don't think we're in that much trouble. Before I leave your circle, can I get one of your quillfish? Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's... If you ask nicely, okay? These things are valuable. <laughs> Uh-oh. I guess you can't get a quillfish, cool sorry. 
So here's the whole combo. So warm. So icy. So chilly. So stiff. Let's see what's happening in the sandwich shop. That we can actually go into. <laughs> you can't even have sandwiches! <laughs> crash number four! Let's hear it for crash number four! <laughs> So bad. That's the fifth combo piece. Oh, I guess the store's closed today. Oh my god. You thought that the sandwich shop was one of the few buildings you could enter? No. Nope. I'm no longer bound by the office. The whole wide world is my office now. More slack. What? Susanna, the office worker. So free. I'm no longer bound by this game. Crash number five. Let's hear it for crash number five. Too free. Why do you even restrict you to one? Charizard can breed and did was in this game? I have no idea. Oh, I got the... I got the crash. Crash number six! Let's hear it for crash number six! <laughs> Great patch, guys. They really fixed the game. Uh, now, depending on your standards, seven crashes may or may not sound like a lot. You could phrase it as approximately one crash per gym leader. That's atrocious. <laughs> that is unacceptable. Uh, now, I will say that I enjoyed the crashes because this was all part of a live stream where a lot of the fun was dunking on the game, but that's some serious tropium, right? The vast majority of people are going to be playing the game on their own. I don't think you can spin crashes as a positive. <laughs> it's just the game literally breaking and then you losing progress. This game does have an autosave feature and it's pretty generous. It autosaves very frequently. So I never lost that much data, but what if you turn the autosave off? Which you might want to for various reasons. Well, you might just lose hours and hours of progress. Ugh. This definitely goes in game-breaking negative, and it's probably the most severe negative bug that happens. You could spin the crashes a bit positively. Uh, they used to put these warnings at the beginning of the game telling you to take frequent breaks, and now Nintendo is taking the initiative. You will take frequent breaks, whether you want to or not. Put Crash in positive because it makes you play a better game. Now, people say that Pokemon is going woke with the removal of gender. Uh, I personally think that's just an excuse to make fewer animations, but you can't deny that it's very progressive of them to hire a blind cameraman. The camera in this game sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, if you are on a slope, any sort of incline or near a wall, uh, you're clipping right through. <laughs> This happens uh, during battles, it can happen during open world traversal, uh, and it happens a lot during evolution or egg hatching sequences. Basically, if you're near any sort of uneven terrain or geometry, uh, prepare to see what's going on behind the curtain. This doesn't really affect the gameplay, so I think we can put this overall in visual fun. Uh, it's definitely dipping a bit into visual sad, but I think it's overall more fun to just sort of see how broken one of the fundamental features of the game is. Uh, notably, in battles, you can actually click the right stick, and if you do that, I think you, it's called the R3 button. If you do that, it sort of gives you the cinematic fixed cam, or at least it tries to give you that. It probably will still mess up and clip through things. Lakitu has worked for 26 years. Let's give him a break, guys. His eyesight isn't what it used to be. Also, I very intentionally used the Super Mario 64 Lakitu, because this is an N64 game. It's a massive bug in the game that makes all the voice lines not play. Hopefully they patch it. <laughs> now again, I'm not a game designer, but I've been told from various sources on the internet, so you know that I can trust them, that something that happens in game development 
is they'll use what are called dev markers. So they'll just put a visual asset that is then used to mark certain triggers. So for example, where a cutscene should start. Now, normally you don't notice this because the developers, because it's for development purposes, will then move that visual marker somewhere where the player cannot see it. Well, they didn't do it in this game because in several cutscenes, you'll just see this phantom Pokeball that has been used as a dev marker, but it's still in the scene. <laughs> and the reason why this icon here is a Pokeball by a door uh, is because one of the more obvious places this happens is in doorways. So sometimes when you enter an indoor area, there'll just be a Pokeball by the door. Head to the concert stage. All right. Was there a Pokeball in the door? Or is it just because I have one eye covered with cheese? And that Pokeball is always the first Pokemon in your party. So if your first Pokemon is in a Pokeball, it'll just be a Pokeball. If it's in a Great Ball, it'll be a Great Ball. If it's in a Master Ball, it'll be in a Master Ball. And sometimes the Pokemon from that ball is actually active in the world. Uh, here's a clip just showing Great Tusk enjoying the great indoors. Buildings didn't exist back in his day, so he just wants to see what all the hype is about. I'd like to see what the hype is about, too. Can we have some indoor areas, please? Now, this is a visual bug. I think this one does qualify as visual sad. Uh, it's just a clear indication that they did not have enough time to do even the most basic of testing. Like half the cutscenes in the game, particularly the uh, Arvis ones in the cave with Mabostiff, which are all copy pasted, by the way. Uh, you'll see the dev Pokeball a lot there. Arvis, barbecue, and Paldea confirmed? No, 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 it's picnics, bro. If you're sick of the gig economy, I've got bad news for you because DoorDash operates in this game too. So if you're running and then you press B to crouch, you'll do a little dash as you like slide and crouch. And for whatever reason, this sliding dash causes some funky things to happen. It causes you to ignore triggers is I guess how I would describe it. One of the more obvious ones is that it ignores collision triggers for doors. <laughs> you can dash right into shops and then it won't pull up the menu that's supposed to appear. This is not directly related to this bug, but uh, it's just something that's kind of sad is so in co-op, you can see other people enter stores, but they don't actually enter the store. They just enter this little atrium and sit there <laughs> and people can stack up and just clip into each other. Looks great. Other things you can do with the dash is the dash allows you to ignore the trigger that stops you at the edge of cliffs. So you can just dash right off cliffs. And the main reason this particular bug is called door dash is because of course, you can just dash through physical doors, uh, which is instrumental to one of the other glitches we're gonna be talking about later in the list. I think overall we're going to put DoorDash in game breaking positive because this actually allows you to dash off cliffs that you're not supposed to. So if you're on Coridon, you can just walk off cliffs, but because of DoorDash, you can dash off of cliffs before you actually get Coridon. Also, I played Scarlet, so I'm just going to say Coridon, but if you played Violet, pretend that I said Miraidon. And if you played both, what's wrong with you? Now this glitch is very minor. It also might not even be a glitch. It could just be a very clumsy design choice, but there are certain battle text triggers that trigger in succession, but like not really. So for example, uh, in one of the final battles against your rival, she has text for when you crit her and she has text for when you hit her with a super effective attack. But if you do both at the same time, so say for example, if you hit her with an auto crit move like trick bouquet or flower trick, whatever it's called, it'll zoom in to play the super effective text. Then it'll zoom out for like a second and then it'll zoom back in <laughs> for the crit text. It's just very clumsy. I think we're gonna put this one in visual sad. It, it's very, very minor, but it does happen. And it happened to me uh, in the final boss battle. <laughs> So the final boss actually has text about super effective hits, but I will actually defend that without spoilers because it does make sense for the final boss to be surprised both by crits and by super effective hits. As an addendum to this one, we'll also include inconsistent text triggers. So the most obvious one is Anger Shell. 
When Anger Shell on Cloth procs, there are five stat changes, and you know there are five because it shows you each one. <laughs> Whereas with other ones, like Shell Smash, which also has to do with a shell breaking, there's one trigger and then it just tells you all the stat changes. This is probably the most jarring visual bug in the entire game. Uh, pretty much every thumbnail for Scarlet and Violet bugs uses this image. Uh, we're, we're gonna call it Dynamax or Gigantamax. So this bug happens in co-op when you get on your ride Pokemon. Sometimes the trainer just decides to become a character from Attack on Titan. They just become gigantic. It's really scary. <laughs> and they said they removed Dynamaxing. The sixth Titan, the student Titan. Oh, a student. That's actually not the only Attack on Titan illusion in this game because some of the new cries, in particular Cloth and Titan, fittingly enough, just sound horrifying. <laughs> they sound like they should be coming from a Titan that is about to eat you and try to exterminate humanity. No idea why they went with that design choice. I think we can very clearly file this one under visual fun. <laughs> it's fun, I'd say. All right, so this icon is really hard to make out. Sorry about that. But uh, true World of Warcraft Burning Crusade fans will know about the Aldor elevator. <laughs> So there's an elevator in a uh, part of World of Warcraft uh, that uh, you can fall through or just jump off from, from and it'll kill you. There's an elevator in this game. It's in the water type gym city. And there are some very powerful cutscene triggers uh, that will force you on or off the elevator. Whether the elevator is up or down, it's very clumsy. Uh, using DoorDash, you can ignore this trigger, <laughs> but you can also jump around the trigger, over the elevator, and then under where it would land, and then you'll be forced into a cutscene where the elevator goes down, even though you just jumped down. I guess this is game-breaking negative, because it wastes your time. You can't just jump off the elevator. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's a pretty minor inconvenience. So if you're watching the premium, you've probably noticed that the music suddenly sucks. And that's because I'm playing the sultry tunes of the Elite Four music bug. So this bug was actually fixed. If you play the game now, after the day, like, 14 patch <laughs> that came out, uh, this will no longer occur. This was directly as a result of the memory leak. The memory leak hasn't been fixed, but this one has. So the Elite Four music has this beginning about four second loop that plays, like, as the... Elite Four member tells you about how cool they are, and then when they send out their first Pokemon, there's like a clap, and then the music ramps up and the actual theme plays. But because of the memory leak, sometimes that didn't happen. <laughs> so you'd have people saying like, wow, the Elite Four music really sucks, when in actuality, they never actually got to hear the real theme. Uh, so this is, I think this goes under audio-visual sad, uh, because some people actually did just have their Elite Four battles ruined by this because they got a really lame version of the theme. Well, I mean, they got the theme, but only the first four seconds of it. Sleep status, that's right. So this is another bug that has been fixed, but previously, uh, when a Pokemon would be afflicted with the sleep status condition, their eyes wouldn't close. They would just stay staring straight ahead and just a little Z's would appear. But now, if you put the enemy Pokemon to sleep, or if you get put to sleep, your eyes actually close. Revolutionary animations. <laughs> I'm not sure if Freeze has been fixed. I assume not. So, how Freeze currently works is that some ice pops up occasionally as your animations continue as normal, so you're not frozen at all. I wish that they had the technology to do this. I think they did back on the N64 in Pokemon Stadium 1, where when you were frozen, you were actually <laughs> frozen in a block of ice, in pain, unable to move. We don't even have the technology to make Pokemon completely static. This definitely goes in visual sad. But at least the sleep portion of this has been fixed. I guess I never really explained the ordering within tiers. There isn't really any. I guess they're going to be ordered in terms of severity, so... I guess Memory Leak is probably the most severe one here. 
And then I think the E4 bug is pretty severe as well for visual sad. Falling with style, yes. Only 90s kids will know that this is falling with style. So this isn't about the gliding in the game, which sucks by the way. <laughs> for some reason you can't glide infinitely, but you can fall infinitely. So if Koridon or your character ever enters like a gap <laughs> or some funky geometry, you'll enter a falling animation and you'll keep falling infinitely until the game eventually fades to black and restores you to an earlier point. Uh, one of the most consistent places to do this is on the rooftops of uh, Iano's city. I forget what it's called, Levitica or something. Uh, but you can go from the surrounding mountains to glide on top of the buildings, and then the rooftops there uh, will trap you. <laughs> Uh, and before you go like, well, you're not supposed to be there, there are item spawns there, so they 100% expect you to actually reach that area. At which point you can go ahead and uh, fall with style. I'd put this in game-breaking negative, because <laughs> it does actually affect the game world, but it is pretty minor. You'll lose like a couple seconds of traversal and a couple seconds of your time. And we're just going to change the names of these tiers from visual to cosmetic. So it's probably a bit more accurate because that includes audio. This is another image that you'll see on a lot of glitch thumbnails. Uh, you could, I put fatal frame here, it's kind of hard to read. But this is a bug with the selfie camera. You have to combo this with the door dash glitch. But you can dash into the door of your rival's house. Uh, which is actually more content than going in the actual house, because there's nothing to do there. You dash into the door, and then you turn on the camera, you go into selfie, and then you do the what's this gesture. And then if you rotate the camera into the door, uh, you'll be asking yourself, what's this? <laughs> There's actually a ton of visual bugs that revolve around animations getting frozen using the selfie feature. That's probably where a lot of the, uh, like, loopy, arm-spinning animations come from that you'll see in a lot of glitch compilations. That never happened to me, but I was actually able to do this fatal frame glitch. I think this one qualifies as cosmetic fun. Because <laughs> you have to do this pretty intentionally, and it is good for a laugh. We'll put it here. And you can actually set this as your uh, trainer card picture. <laughs> uh, the selfie feature can also bug out your facial expressions during the sandwich animation, which happened to me slightly because I ended up eating a sandwich with my mouth closed. Although to be fair, that's not much of a downgrade over the actual animation. Alright, so this icon represents the horror aspects of this game. Five segments at Sada's. So what'll happen a lot? is you'll just get jump scared <laughs> by various models popping in and out of existence. Uh, this happens a lot during cutscenes, it happens a lot as you enter doors. <laughs> Prepare to get jump scared, and sometimes it actually does come with sound. Uh, one of my uh, viewers sent me this video of them hatching an egg in the gate of Area Zero, uh, and then briefly just uh, a talon flame appears. It's shiny and it, you actually hear its cry just for like a second. This is 100% going to happen to you during your playthrough. I think this actually counts as cosmetic sad. Because it's just the spaghetti peeking through in a very jarring way. Let me put it here. Five segments at Sada's. If you have the power, please build a scary five segment Dunsparce. Great Dunsparces. Oh, Type J with 10 gifted subs, thank you. So now 10 more of you can build your own custom Dunsparces. Now this glitch is sort of an offshoot of the disabled cameraman glitch, but fairly often this game will give you an FPS perspective. It really puts you in the action, and your Pokemon's not there at all. It's you! 
Now you can do this at pretty much any time in an overworld battle because you can freely manipulate the camera. I'm not really going to count that as a glitch, but especially during the Titan battles uh, where there's a fixed camera angle, uh, there's the Titan in the frame, and then possibly you and your partner Pokemon on in frame, most likely not. Uh, it's time for you to fight your own battles. And I'm going to show you some FPS highlights. Um, where's our Pokemon? Watson? Hello? I can't see you. I can't see our Pokemon at all, and we can't rotate the camera. Electro Ball. Oh, I guess it's a, this is a first-person game now. I guess that's what they meant by all the FPS talk, right? Oh! All right, we're fighting him ourselves. Okay, so we got a, we got a cosplay, right? We're the one fighting. All right. Electro Ball. He's gonna hit my. Oh, FPS gaming. All right. Well, we can use bite, right? Hut. Bit him. Giga Drain. No. Bite a teapot for realism? Uh, do I have a kettle? Hang on. I do actually have a kettle. Alright, this is, uh... Finally, the Pokemon is real. Protected. Oh, not protected. Didn't get the warranty. This is ridiculous. I guess we'll Dragon Claw it then, that's stronger. Huh! Hyper Drill! Oh! Pokemon streamer gets drilled on stream! Awful! YouTube, don't ban me! Huh! Claude. Got him. Seven day suspension, if this was Twitch, yeah. I think this one definitely goes in cosmetic fun. I actually had a lot of fun doing this. Uh, it's, it's very good for a stream setting. It, it makes it so immersive. <laughs> and people say that this game has bad FPS. Well, it's got at least one, right? A. So Gimme Gold is introduced in this game, and he needs 999 Reddit Gold uh, to ascend to his String Cheese form and actually become really strong. One of my complaints about this game that I think is not a nitpick, and it's also not a bug, uh, it's that exploring the open world really sucks because there are no rewards. <laughs> Uh, you're supposed to find these roaming gimme ghouls. It's kind of like Korok seeds. And when you find one of these gimme ghouls, you'll obtain, I think, one to five gimme ghoul coins. And you need almost a thousand, so get hunting. Or you can just go to one of these very much not hidden gimme ghouls that are in towers and get 50 to 60 coins. Okay? Now, sometimes when you find these uh, overworld gimme ghouls, and this is where the glitch comes in, you didn't find them, because you can't actually pick them up. They're bugged. They'll be there, they'll make their little noises, you can approach them, but no matter what you do, you can't pick them up. And this also happened to me with an overworld item as well, where it just appeared, but wasn't actually obtainable. So this actually is a gameplay thing. Uh, this will just happen to you during your journey. There's nothing you can do about it. You thought you found something? Well, think again. You didn't. Our man Snake here, he's standing in for all of the ladder and elevation related glitches. Someday you'll feed on a tree co. <laughs> so th th there are some issues with the ladders in this game. One is that if the ladder is ever so slightly off kilter, you can't interact with it at all. So there's a tilted tower in the desert. It kind of makes sense that you can't climb this one, but there's also a tilted tower uh, in like a lake. It's like 15 degrees tilted and you can't climb it at all, which is ridiculous. The more glitchy thing is that there is sometimes a prompt in the game, go up, which I think is to prevent you from getting stuck. So supposedly it's if you fall off somewhere, you can hit this go up prompt and then it'll teleport you back to where you were before you fell. However, I don't think it's actually triggered by falling. It's just triggered by changing elevation quickly. Say if you were running on stairs or climbing a ladder. <laughs> so you'll get this completely useless go, go back up prompt. <laughs> 
I think overall this one goes in game breaking positive uh, because it, it does make traversal a little bit e easier by giving you like 15 yard warps or I guess if you're from Europe 15 meter warps probably the most minor positive game breaking bug. Also, this might be a bug. This definitely gets a question mark because they don't tell you this anywhere. But if you hold B while climbing a ladder, you climb faster. I don't know why you would ever want to climb slower. So you should always just hold B while climbing a ladder. And there's zero reason to ever actually use a ladder going down because you can just door dash off the ledge and then it'll get you down to the bottom faster. Now, if Sonic were in Pokemon, he'd have pretty good base speed. But it turns out your player character also has the need for speed. <laughs> so, I don't know if this one has been fixed, but if you connect two controllers to your Switch and then you run diagonally and press the joystick on both, it just adds the speed. So you run twice as fast. <laughs> Great game. Although this is positive, it makes you go faster. This is pretty useless because you may as well just sprint and Koridon, and that way you don't have to do this weird like two controller claw thing. It's pretty useless, but it's really funny, and it is a positive effect on the game. So we're going to put in game breaking positive. The player used agility. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Fake news. It doesn't actually double your speed. It just makes you 33% faster. Sorry. This must be what they meant by having a turbo button on controllers. So I deliberately used a hook shot that's uh, kind of colored like a Pokeball here. So the lock-on in this game is complete bollocks. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time had a lock-on and a hookshot and it actually worked. So in the 20 years since, somehow lock-on technology has got worse. Especially jarring because Legends Arceus had a lock-on that was, I'm not gonna call it great, I mean it's a lock-on feature, but it worked. <laughs> the lock-on in this game never works, unless it works too well, so you can lock onto stuff through walls and cliffs, and when you throw a Pokeball to initiate a battle, your player gets warped so that they can be near the battle. So you can go ahead and throw a Pokeball right through a cliff, right through a wall, and then your trainer will get hookshot and warped to where the action is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this bug is so severe that you can use it to actually skip the academy because you can warp like back behind your house. This is a really, really major bug because it allows you to get to places you're not supposed to be able to at all. Uh, an easy place you can do this is you can warp into the starting cave to get a Houndor uh, before you actually get high jump or climb on Koridon. It's actually a really big deal. And you can skip the academy with it, so, so far this is our biggest uh, game-breaking positive bug. Now you shouldn't actually skip school with this bug because then none of the story things actually activate. You can't do the star bases, the titans, or the gyms. But you know what? I don't want to do them anyway. This game sucks. <laughs> the most fun part is catching Pokemon. You can do that without doing any of the story stuff. Too cool for school. Okay, only, only true scholars of imported cheese lore will know this icon. So this is the stand-in for all of the overworld NPC bugs and strange dialogue. So people who say that this game has a living open world, are you okay? <laughs> what game did you play? This game is unintentionally very unsettling and kind of creepy because there is zero thought or care put into the placement of overworld NPCs. So forget the fact that overworld trainers that you actually battle just stare off into space in the middle of fields. Why is there a salary man <laughs> like just on this deserted island? What's your job, bro? In the actual towns, there are these weird like AI generated ghost towns where NPCs just repeat the same nonsensical lines as they complete these patrols. And because the game lags so much and the lag is dependent on how far the NPC is from you, that can cause the patrols to actually mess up their timing and cause NPCs to clip into each other. Sometimes you'll have NPCs walking with like clones of themselves. It's really jarring. And like the spookiest moments in the game for me were exploring this seaside town, which is straight out of like a Lovecraft story. There's a town I think called Innsmouth, where the people of the town are basically mind controlled and all made thralls uh, of this like demon that lives in the sea. And that's basically what happened to this town. 
because everybody is just obsessed with quillfish. And it looks extra ridiculous because, of course, quillfish as an aquatic Pokemon doesn't have a proper following animation. Now, I understand that some compromises have to be made. This is not calling Game Freak lazy because I know that aquatic Pokemon can't battle on land. So as a compromise, they float. And those Pokemon can be used in Let's Go, where they also use this weird floating animation. That's fine, right? That's sort of a like, what can you do thing. As developers though, you can choose what following Pokemon these NPCs have. Why in the world would you give them aquatic Pokemon? <laughs> it looks terrible. And I want you to see my descent into madness. Let's insanity together. Bustling with life around here, isn't it? How convenient. Don't mind me. I, how convenient. Don't mind me. Just taking a walk with my quillfish here. Quillfish new ability levitate. Oh, a student. We can use this line in the future, right? Oh, a student. And this lady's also walking with her quillfish, I guess. Big quillfish fans in this town. Ah, uh, let me see. How many quillfish are in this town? If you're gonna give all these NPCs a trailing Pokemon, why would you pick quillfish? How convenient. That's the sea. What's a sea? Oh, remember when Aaron learned about the sea? I remember. How convenient! This is like a fever dream. <laughs> I wonder if it's convenient. How convenient. I knew it. Ah, perfection! I'm losing my mind! Poke, poke, poke. Ah, so cute and poisony. So in this case... The quillfish isn't even on the screen. Yet these people are still obsessed with quillfish. Dude, it's like that... Do you know that RuneScape quest where everybody is mind-controlled by sea slugs? This whole town is mind-controlled by quillfish. Oh, a student! How convenient! <laughs> I'm losing my mind! Is it convenient? How convenient! <laughs> At least it's not a quillfish, it's just a Whiskash! Nobody has any normal Pokemon in this town! How convenient! <laughs> oh, Whiskash! Yes, those were the days! Okay. Our sanity meter is returning. I think we're alright. I'll just sit here, smiling, at this table, with no food, across from nobody. How convenient. As for a ranking, I think that this is a very severe, cosmetic sad bug because not for a single second did I believe that this was a real open world populated by actual NPCs. It, it feels like AI generated. A bad AI, by the way. And this affects the entire game. Every single town is like this. To the invisible boat mobile. <laughs> yeah, sometimes your ride Pokemon is uh, invisible. It just doesn't show up, and your character just uh, gallops along on the invisible boatmobile. This can happen with either Miraidon or Koraidon, but this is definitely a case where it's better with Koraidon, because Miraidon has uh, stabilization. It's a smooth ride, but uh, Koraidon actually like bounces, which <laughs> looks way funnier. Uh, this is definitely a high tier cosmetic fun. I'm not sure if it's more fun than the uh, Dynamax glitch. I'm, I'm gonna say they're comparable. In the end, I think the Dynamax glitch is a bit more striking, but you'll probably have more fun with the Invisible Boatmobile glitch because it's active for longer, right? You can actually traverse the world on your Invisible Boatmobile. 
Well, Mr. Mime is not in this game, but invisible walls are. Now, I'm not talking about invisible walls around the border of the world. That's kind of a what can you do thing. So if you try to swim out to sea, you'll be stopped by an invisible wall. That's fine. What's not fine are the other ones. So <laughs> picnics are contained within an invisible force field, whatever. You can't actually allow the player to like go anywhere in the picnic state, right? But the thing is, your Pokemon that are playing around in the picnic can go right through the walls. So sometimes you get a situation where the Pokemon you're supposed to be playing with are like way off in the distance. You gotta break out the Arvis searching gesture because they're so far away. <laughs> what? Uh, and at the very beginning of the game, there's a story segment where you're traversing a cave uh, with uh, your ride Pokemon who has had a sandwich so powerful that they've regained their battle form. That's never explained. And in that sequence, there are invisible walls. But like, it doesn't make any sense because there's also cave walls. Why did you add invisible walls? <laughs> what? I think this qualifies as cosmetic sad is what I would put it as. It's not a big deal, but you'll probably notice it and it'll take you out of the experience a bit. Were the cave walls a glitch? I think so, because if you look at the footage, your character like freaks out when they run into it and then you can actually pass through it. So the most famous image of this character, Solaire from Dark Souls, is him praising the sun. Uh, it can't quite fit in the frame, uh, but he, he's known for jolly cooperation. He's defeated in this image because there's nothing jolly about the co-op in this game. It's horrendous. So I'm not going to talk about raids here, that's a whole nother thing, but there are so many bugs with the co-op. <laughs> Despite the fact that you can't actually do any real co-op. So for whatever reason, story battles and cutscenes in co-op are not instanced for each player. So what that means is you don't get your own separate cutscene and battle. They happen in the overworld, which means that your party members can just show up in the cutscene. <laughs> which looks awful and even more like shocking, they can interact with the characters of the cutscene like this. Um, here I am. Flashbang? I guess. Ah, uh, stay in your Pokeball for once, will you? Gotta get the toothpaste. Aye. I didn't get my prediction wrong. The reason why there's a picnic table in the background is because of co-op. Wow, Team Star went through all that, huh? They just wanted the bullies to go away. But then they became the bad guys in everyone's eyes. What a joke. <laughs> what a joke! They even appear in the sepia about a year and a half ago uh, cutscenes with the Team Star members. So time travel, it's in this game. In the final area of the game, co-op is enabled? <laughs> As in one of the features of co-op, exclusive version spawns still happens. So when you're near a co-op partner from a separate version than you, they will spawn their version exclusives in your game, but only if you guys are near each other. That still works in Area Zero, but you can't see your co-op teammates. Now, if you're really huffing that copium, you could say that it's because Area Zero is just funky and time and space mean different things. I don't think that makes any sense. I was able to do co-op because I was streaming the game, so I could ask viewers to stream snipe me and stay near me so we could catch each other's Pokemon. And you do interact with their world because your co-op partners can fight Pokemon. Those Pokemon show up in your game, but they're like phantoms and you can just walk through them. Now, even if you're offline in Area Zero, there's some co-op with your friends that you made along your journey. And of course, there's issues with them. So your AI party members, as far as I can tell, they move when you move. But if your movement is somehow impeded, say as if you're in deep water or you're running into a rock, well, your teammates don't register that and they just keep moving, which looks really ridiculous. Although, in Game Freak's defense, even in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, your party members were not very good at 
following your lead. So well, they get a little bit of a pass on that one. I would say due to the invisible factor in Area Zero, I think this glitch actually does qualify not just as cosmetic. It is actually game breaking because it affects your play experience. It's pretty severe. I think we're going to put it uh, below crashes, but above falling with style. A possible explanation for why you can't see your teammates in Area Zero might be that they just didn't want them to be able to join during the actual story segments that happen there. But even if you finish the story, they still don't appear, so I think it's just spaghetti. This is a very minor glitch, but uh, it's one that's near and dear to my heart. So when entering or exiting certain buildings, I don't know how the game actually calculates what your position is supposed to be, but it seems to me that they just move you a certain distance, horizontal distance from the door, and they just hope that there's ground under you. And if there isn't, you fall. So it's very fun to role play with this. Uh, they really hate window shoppers in Paldea because you can go into a restaurant. Hey, what can I get for you? Oh, you're not going to order anything? Well, you know what? This knuckle sandwich is on the house, all right? Get out of here, kid. And then they kick you out and you fall. There's a couple places where this happens. Uh, there's one restaurant in the main city where this happens. I know that narrows it down because the main city is nothing but restaurants. Uh, this happens if you try to enter these Area Zero entrance before you actually are supposed to. It'll turn you around with an error message, and if you're on Koridon, you'll fall. And the most severe place this happens is actually in the final final area of the game, it's like the very end of Area Zero. When you enter the Zero Lab, you fall, and when you exit the Zero Lab, you fall a lot. You fall for like half a second. It's very jarring. I think this one is silly enough that it qualifies as cosmetic fun. I personally enjoyed it, uh, I guess a little bit less than playing with the camera. Now this bug has been half patched, so if you're wondering why in the beginning I said 0.5 <laughs> for one of the bugs, this is why. This is an incredibly severe bug, <laughs> which is your ability to duplicate your ride Pokemon and any items it was holding. Your story companion ride Pokemon has a battle form and a ride form, and those are independent states, which is incredibly clumsy because every time you want to use it in battle, you have to actually select change to battle form. And then if you just get on it to traverse the overworld, it switches out of battle form. And you have to go back into the menu and put it back in battle form if you want to use it in the battle. There is a way around this that doesn't involve a bug, but it's a bit of a spoiler, so I'm not going to mention it. The bug part is that you're not supposed to be able to deposit Koridon into your PC while it's in battle form. But if you catch a wild Pokemon, you have the option to swap that wild Pokemon with a Pokemon in your party. And if you press A and B really quickly, you can end up putting your right Pokemon in the PC. And doing this can duplicate it and any item it's holding. Great. <laughs> they fixed that part of the glitch, but they didn't fix the second part of the glitch, which is the even faster way to duplicate items. So your ride Pokemon has its own individual box. I think this is because they want you to be able to represent it somehow, even if all your boxes are full. Uh, but by doing some menu finagling with your cloned Koridon, the ride form switching uh, and held items, uh, you can infinitely duplicate your items. That part hasn't been fixed. So if you still have your duplicate Koridon, uh, you can still dupe your items. Great. This can allow you to duplicate incredibly valuable items like the Master Ball, which actually isn't that valuable because like what Pokemon are you actually catching? But you can also duplicate your uh, rare candies if you want to do that, uh, XL XP candies, ability patches, anything you could want. And people have filled their coffers with duped items. So this has already had a huge impact on the game and an impact that's probably never going away. So yeah, massive game breaking bug. Positive. This is the bug that finally convinced me that these games actually are more broken than Pokemon Red, Blue, and Green. So to break the menus in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Green, you have to actually intentionally do things, right? You have to use the select bug. The menus in this game are broken by default. What a great game. So yeah, icons, specifically icons in menus, are completely broken. <laughs> they don't load correctly. This is most obvious if you flick the Pokedex back and forth from the start to the end. Icons are super slow to update, and you can actually see icons for Pokemon you haven't encountered or seen yet, so it even spoils you a bit on the game like that. This glitch is agony? 
<laughs> when you actually try to look at your boxes because each box takes like two or three seconds to load. How did they mess this up? Also, if you ever try to customize your characters, if you open up one of the wardrobe menus, every single option takes like one or two seconds to load, which makes it really, really tedious to try and actually preview your look. Not that you would actually bother with customization in this game, because there's no point since you can't customize the most defining part of your outfit, which is your shirt and your pants. Don't worry though, because they're gonna sell you uniform customization in the Summer Break DLC. Mark my words. Hey, voice only imported cheese here with extra info about the broken menus. So when you defeat an enemy, you gain experience and that shows up in a window. But if you defeat the enemy with a momentum move, so that would be a move that deals damage and switches you out like volt switch, U-turn or flip turn, then the XP menu overlays the switch menu. Nice. This, I think, is a cosmetic sad glitch. I'm actually going to put it above the E4 glitch because it affects you every single time you try to navigate your menus, which you're going to be doing a lot because Pokemon games and honestly turn-based RPGs in general are just a series of menus. My leg! This is an addendum to the door dash glitch. Uh, when you dash off a ledge, usually your fall is broken by your Rotom phone, who in a very clumsy animation will pop up and I guess use levitate to save you from actually hitting the ground. But if you actually land on a slope, I guess Rotom's programming doesn't account for that. So my leg, you'll just land boop, right on the ledge and shatter every limb in your body. Uh, the player character from Legends Arceus is a real pansy because <laughs> pretty much the only way to die in that game is to fail to recall Braviary in time when you try to descend quickly by dismissing Braviary. The Paldean student, they drink their milk, okay? <laughs> Got limbs of steel. This will pretty much never happen to you and it doesn't affect the gameplay at all, so I think this is a very minor cosmetic fun glitch. All right, actually, we are going to put this in game breaking positive because it's a speed run tech because that way you don't lose time on the Rotom animation. <laughs> you can see here that this poor student is uh, kind of clipping out of this icon. He's lucky that he's only clipping out of the still image and not clipping out of the terrain of the game. You might be surprised to know that in this game which features relentless clipping, you can clip right through the world. <laughs> There's no real way to tell when this will happen, but one of the easiest ways to set it up is to encounter a Pokemon in a narrow cave. Because when you get into a Pokemon encounter, usually your trainer either jumps backwards or forwards uh, to get an appropriate distance from the enemy. And if there's a wall in the way, they might just jump right through the wall and right through the map. I think this overall goes in game breaking negative because it sort of wastes your time. And if you don't have swimming, you, you just kind of void out. But if you do have swimming, uh, you can kind of explore uh, the aquatic underworld. So it's positive or negative depending on the circumstances. I'm going to say it is overall negative because I think most people just want to play the game and don't want to fall through the world. Now, this game introduces an Eevee-themed trainer, but doesn't actually introduce any Eeveelutions, so if you feel the need to interact with more Eeveelutions, consider evolving into a mighty Patreon using the link in the description. Really helps out the channel. Uh, but uh, what kind of benefits will you receive? Well, let me ask you. Are you sick of the Radita race? Do you wish that you could generate a passive income and finally be free to live the life you and your loved ones deserve? Well, I've got an opportunity for you. All you have to do is start a picnic with a shiny sparkly item on the ground and then just do nothing. And the game will generate revenue for you. If there's a sparkle item on the ground within the range of a picnic, whenever the game would generate an egg, it might also just duplicate the shiny item on the ground. I have no idea what kind of spaghetti causes this to happen, but you can just farm infinite money by doing nothing. It's actually an infinite money hack. Now this is really slow. It is much easier to just do raids and get money that way, items you can sell from that. But in that case, you have to actually do the raids and I would much rather do nothing. 
In fact, there's a very, very long list of things I would rather do instead of playing raids in this game. So although this is a game-breaking positive glitch, because there are much faster ways to actually make money in the game, I don't think it's that impactful. We're going to put it uh, about here. I had another icon for this, which I pulled from an American Cold War era PSA about what to do if there's a nuclear bomb. There's a family having a picnic. You got to duck in cover and they ruin their picnic by just putting the sheet over their head. I'm sure they were saved from the nuclear disaster. Not saved from the disaster that is picnics in this game, though. There are so many picnic bucks. So Terrestrialize turns your Pokemon into a crystal. Specifically, it gives them diamond hands because the ball in picnics can suddenly cause your Pokemon to go to the moon. <laughs> I don't know what happens there, but it's pretty funny. Your co-op partners can set up a picnic in you, which traps you in the picnic table. You can actually maneuver and phase through the table, but you can't actually like leave the table until you start falling infinitely, at which point you void out and are free from the table. Hooray. Uh, something that shocked and disturbed me was that the sandwich making cutscene, like the little mini game. Now I thought this would happen, you know, in its own mini game. Apparently, it actually happens on the table, which explains the crazy graphical clipping that happens between the bowl and the tablecloth. And also, your co-op partners can just dance on the table and clip into your sandwich making. You're gonna fail the health inspection check, don't do that. And raid dens from your co-op partners can spawn in your world, but they don't have collision, so you can just go ahead and uh, set a picnic up in them and uh, add some minerals to your diet. Now this one is silly enough that I think it makes it into cosmetic fun. This is another minor visual bug and I'm not exactly sure what causes it, but uh, on two separate occasions during my playthrough, uh, when I initiated a battle, the sort of action lines and blur that appear on the screen stayed on screen for way too long, like five or six seconds. Weavile was exerting its pressure and then the field of view cleared up after that. Pretty harmless. <laughs> So I think it's a cosmetic fun glitch, but very minor. Hurts your eyes a bit though, be careful. No prizes for guessing this one. Now I'm, I'm a reasonable person, okay? Let's not be hyperbolic. I'm not gonna say that I would rather play Raid Shadow Legends, but Terra Raids are horrendous. Oh, so what aspect of Raids are bugged? The Raids. The whole mechanic <laughs> is abominable. But I'm not going to say it's the worst part of the game, because the worst part of the game would be the star base raids, uh, which are probably the worst gameplay I've ever experienced in my entire life. So at least the raids are better than that. So the first problem with raids is actually joining them. And you do want to join them because your AI partners suck. So let's say that you're in a union circle. You want to join a raid. Your teammate posts a raid. It doesn't show up for you. Okay. By the way, if anybody accidentally leaves your union circle, say because they crashed, which they probably will, they can't just rejoin your union circle. You have to disband and form a completely new one. You want to join a raid that somebody outside of your union circle posted? Well, good luck, because the raid countdown timer does not work. The raid will almost certainly be abandoned or full by the time you get there and there's nothing you can do about it. Just keep trying. But congratulations, you actually made it into a raid. Well, unfortunately, you're now in a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet terror raid. Nothing works. <laughs> Whose idea was it to have a timer system in a turn-based game? When are you getting your next turn? Who knows? When does the enemy take their turns? Who knows? When do your allies take their turns? Who knows? The camera does whatever it wants. Sometimes your Pokemon freeze, the enemy Pokemon dies and comes back to life because it didn't actually die because it turns out that the pure power ability doesn't actually work. It is just a mess. I think the best way to illustrate it is to just show you one. Here you go. This will definitely work. Okay, belly drum. Why is Belly Drum... Why do I even need to target Belly Drum? Who could it possibly be used on, if not me? Like, what a waste of time. Played. He died! We got him in one hit, cool. Oh, he didn't die. He healed. Hello? Okay, so he died, 
But then he undied and then shielded himself. And then removed our buffs. Nice. Great game. And it's sunny. Okay. And now his health bar is just gone. But it's back. But it's zero. But... What's happening? And of, and of course the camera angle is incorrect. Hello? We won! Charizard disappeared somewhere. <laughs> Great game. Also, where's our trainer? Look at this fixed camera angle from which we cannot see anything. Also, Cloyster died twice. Oh, we can terrestrialize. This is gonna take forever, though. I just wanna see if terrestrializing breaks the game, which apparently doesn't. Hello? Azumarill, you okay? <laughs> I hear Terrestrialize turns your Pokemon into a crystal. They really meant it. <laughs> Play rough. <laughs> a critical hit. I think we can still win, right? If Cloyster doesn't die again. Hard cloister throw. I can't believe somebody had the audacity to come to a raid unprepared. Can you believe such a thing? Next you're gonna tell me they didn't bug test this game. Great sound design, by the way. Hello? Communicating. How about some communication from Game Freak? How about that? What did you think? Worth 60 US dollars? I don't think so. Oh, apparently I said pure power instead of huge power. They're the same ability. I'm not redoing it. For all the people who say that you can enjoy the game despite some technical shortcomings, I challenge you to try and actually do terror raids. They are as close to unplayable as you can get without the game literally like crashing and being unplayable. Which it probably will, by the way. I can't believe they're actually worse than Dynamax raids. But people will defend it anyway. You like raids in Final Fantasy XIV. Why don't you like raids in this game? What's wrong with Raid Shadow Legends? That's a raid too. What's wrong with Remoraid? That's a raid too. This is... I think it's gonna be game-breaking negative right behind crashes in the memory leak. Which is not where I put it. <laughs> now I put this one next to Raid Terra Legends, but it's its own bug because it's separate. So Ditto will always transform into the host of the raid. But if you go into a Ditto raid and the host has a Ditto, the enemy Ditto will freak out, attempt to transform into Ditto, and instead it just sits there and it'll never put up shields, so you actually might have fun playing the raid. Wow! So this is very minor game-breaking positive because it only affects specifically Ditto raids, but hey, every Ditto raid is completely free and Ditto is a useful Pokemon you might want to try and catch, so I think it goes like here. More than the my leg thing. As an addendum to Raid Terra Legends, apparently, even if you lose the raid, you can still get drops if you're not the host, and it's much faster to lose if that's what you're trying to do. So people would bring like Koraidon to set up Sun for the enemy Charizard and get everyone else killed so they could just get raid drops. Nice system. Jolly cooperation. And because you can only clear one Charizard raid that you host each day, it was actually a good strategy to keep losing on purpose. RN Jesus. Hallowed be thy name. So, it turns out in the beginning of online, if you lost, it really was a skill issue. Because every single ladder match used the same RNG seed. Grass types <laughs> causing mischief as usual. So what is an RNG seed? I think to explain it in like layman's terms, computers can't actually be truly random because somebody has to like program them, right? They're machines. They can only do what they're told. But, 
you can sort of create fake randomness by making the RNG depend on certain actions. Uh, one of the easiest ways to see this is in Fire Emblem, where you can very clearly manipulate the RNG by changing the way you move. A simple way to think of this is that your actions determine the RNG. And because the start point for this RNG was always the same, you could manipulate it to, for example, always hit sheer cold, which is a one KO move. It was absolutely absurd, made competitive a complete joke, but this has been fixed. But this was such a major, major issue, this might be one of the most powerful game-breaking negative ones. I'm gonna put it right below crashes. Now, I will say that although as a bug, this is, you know, really embarrassing and shouldn't be in the game, I would actually be really interested in a fixed RNG competitive mode. I think that would be really fun, where you could predict what moves will or will not hit based on like memorizing the RNG. I think that would be really fun if it's done on purpose, not as a mistake in a $60 game. So it turns out that some NPCs in the Paldea region, uh, they've signed up to be secret shoppers. So NPCs and the items they hold sometimes load separately so you can get a floating bag just walking through the streets. It's spooky. Uh, if you initiate a wild battle near an overworld trainer, sometimes the trainer will despawn, but the ball they're holding won't. Spooky. And after the battle, their text also won't display. And trainers themselves sometimes, this happens particularly in the normal gym town, where you actually have battles on the street. Trainers just don't care. They'll just walk right through your battle, right through the attacks, right through you. How convenient. You don't have to even think about programming them correctly. This is goofy enough that I think we're going to say that it's uh, it's fun. <laughs> and we'll put it uh, below the cameraman. So you've heard of Sunny Side Up. How about Sunny Side Side? <laughs> so you can apparently hatch eggs on slopes, and when you do that, the entire hatching animation happens sideways. <laughs> Looks really ridiculous. Uh, this is, I think, a cosmetic fun bug. Uh, it doesn't affect the gameplay at all, but it is really funny. Uh, I think this actually goes above Secret Shopper. You have to do this intentionally, uh, but uh, it, it looks wild. Now, the gym challenges in this game are something else. <laughs> I don't mean that in a good way. One of them is the challenge before the psychic type gym, where you basically play, ironically enough, the most brain dead Simon Says game ever, where you only have one prompt at a time and you have like three seconds to hit it. I don't even know if it's possible to fail because you can input all of the wrong ones with no penalties. You, you can just mash all four each time and progress the game. Why it's on here is because if you press the correct one, the timer pauses briefly, but you can just keep mashing the correct one to completely freeze the timer. <laughs> now what should happen is you should press the correct one and it should progress to the next prompt. But no, you can just stay on the same prompt for upwards of like 30 seconds by just mashing. <laughs> There's no reason to actually do this, but nobody actually programmed to check that hitting the correct prompt wouldn't freeze the timer. This only affects one minigame in the entire game, and it is a negative because it just wastes more of your time. This might actually be the saddest bug in game-breaking negative. Zawarado, what a world we live in. Did you know that in this game you play as the dragon type born? So Skyrim is another infamously buggy game, but at least aside from the bugs, it's actually fun. You can Skyrim your way up walls in this game. If you jump backwards up a slope, you can just keep doing it. You can climb slopes by jumping backwards. Nice. And you can use that to traverse steep slopes before you actually gain climbing, which is a pretty big sequence break. Oh yeah, this one could work, right? So if we try to jump up this one normally, it doesn't work. Alright, so I'm going to disable the in-game music for a bit, because, uh... You know what music we have to add in the post-production, right? So here we go, let's try this. Paldea belongs... ...to the cheese! Here we go! <laughs> Open world, baby! Da-da-dun, da-da-dun!
Now this isn't as exciting as it could be because of a very non-glitched thing, which is the fact that the Knockly line with Salt Cure can kill every single Titan in the game. So Salt Cure is very weird because it's like the only persistent damage over time in the game. Usually like binding moves that deal percentage damage have a duration, but Salt Cure doesn't. Uh, you'll just keep curing them until they die. And because you have Sturdy, you can use Big Pharma to Salt Cure and just stall until you win. And because of that, backward slope climbing is not as powerful as it could be because you can just go get climbing right away. But it's still really fun, and if you don't want to cheese the titans, then this is an extra way to cheese the traversal. This is a pretty major exploit, I'm going to put it below the hookshot. Welcome to Small of Garden. When you're here, you're family. This is my favorite bug of the entire game. It, I'm going to put it right now, it's the best cosmetic fun glitch. So the first trial of the game, uh, at the bug gym, the olive one. It's just saying that out loud. At the bug gym, the olive one. Great theming. This olive in the actual minigame, it looks kind of ridiculous because you just run into the olive. It doesn't affect your character at all, but the olive bounces all over the place. That's not where the bug takes place. The bug can not actually happen in the challenge where it gets bugged into one of the NPCs and gets stuck. But the reason why this is in cosmetic fun at the very top of it, and it won't be dethroned, is because you can play around with the olive in the field north of the town even outside of the minigame. Now that part's intentional, but of course what you can do with the olive is not. <laughs> I'm just gonna show you what happens. Why we did it! <laughs> olive Garden! When you're here, you're family. <laughs> oh, Foycoke, are you, are you okay? You, you feeling dizzy? <laughs> how do we, um, how do you recall Pokemon? Oh, I think we did it again. Yeah. <laughs> Fly, my friend, be free. It even comes with cartoon sound effects. <laughs> now this is a Pokemon battle. That's what they mean, right? Come on, let's, let's get him in the goal. <laughs> let's see if it works with other Pokemon. Yeah, small of is in it. Oh, but Smolov is, like, too small. Okay, so Smolov... It, it doesn't quite work with Smolov. Let's start with somebody really big, like, uh, Black Angus here, the Tauros. Oh! <laughs> First try! Oh, but then he freed himself, and now he's just stuck in the ground. Makahita might work, right? Or Magikarp, since those bounce a lot. Okay, alright, he's in. Oh, he's too heavy! He doesn't fly anywhere! Let's sumo wrestle. Come on, Makahita. <laughs> you think you can outpush me? <laughs> oh, first try. Oh, yes. <laughs> We've seasoned this crab with some olive. Oh, he escaped. Get him. Get in the goal. Almost. Ah. Oh. Why are you on a raft? Where's the water? Okay. <laughs> well, that wasn't supposed to happen. I guess because it's raining. Ah, oh, that was too far away. Oh, go, go, go! Goal! <laughs> World Cup! Check the internet lately. Oh, we did it! We did it! <laughs> we have liftoff! To the moon! Oh, the American space program, it's alive and well. Here, here we go, here we go. Yes! No! Oh. Okay, we're aiming for the center of the olive. Here, here we go. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Not quite what we were aiming for. It should be a Japanese big map. Oh, we did it! We're in, we're in, we're in! We're in! Yes! We did it! <laughs> Grass Terra type, let's go! I believe- <laughs> We're in, baby! Oh no, we escaped! Uh, whoa! Ride that olive! Uh, he's really good at sticking in the olive. Oh! 
the gym leader uses bug types and as a prof am I stuck in the thing? Ooh, oh, that's... <laughs> Small I'm not I'm not even touching the controller. Small live garden when you're here your family. There's so much fun you can have with this glitch because you can try it with all the different Pokemon in the game. So far, Golden Go appears to be the Golden Go 2 to actually get it to stick in the olive. You can ascend to the heavens if you do it right with your ride Pokemon, although I wasn't able to get very high. And an extra fun thing about Small of Garden is that in co-op, your allies cannot see the olive, so it just looks like you're freaking out. <laughs> If you've played a video game in your life, you probably know that spinning is a good way to win. And the NPCs in this game, they give it their best shot. <laughs> Paldea! Occasionally, I don't know what causes this, but some NPC trainers will just turn into Beyblades. It's not that they're spinning as part of their Pokeball throwing animation, it's that they'll throw the Pokeball and just do a little twirl. <laughs> it looks absolutely hilarious. Competitive balance in shambles now that the trainers themselves can use rapid spin to clear the field. Uh, this, I think, is in cosmetic fun, second only to Small of Garden. Uh, it's really fun to just watch each trainer and see if, if they're a spinner. So don't say that spinners aren't in the game. They are. <laughs> I'm not sure what causes this bug, but at some point, uh, we decided to evolve a Pokemon under a bridge. We did this in the area with the Poison Star Base, and we used a Toad School, it was below the bridge, and then when it evolved, it suddenly teleported as Toad School above the bridge. I don't know if this happens when you evolve a small Pokemon into a big Pokemon, that's my guess as to what was happening, but uh, if you have the time, go ahead and test this. <laughs> I'd put this as a cosmetic fun glitch. Very minor, probably even below the sideways egg hatching. Only happened to us once, but we weren't exactly trying to cause anything to happen. I guess because we used a giant tentacruel for this, apparently there's also a giant Della bird clip that can happen. And if I can find it, you'll see it now. Terra, embrace the darkness in your heart. <laughs> okay, so this is the Terra Icon lighting bug. You didn't mishear me. Not the Terra lighting bug. The Terra icon lighting bug. It feels insane to even say this out loud, but the terrestrialize icon in the menu affects the lighting of the world. So basically when you open the menu that has the Terra icon in it, sometimes the world lights up, and then darkness returns when you close the menu. And we know it's the icon, because if you terrestrialize, and then open the battle menu, the icon disappears, and the lighting doesn't change. You can use this uh, to have a bit of fun, and uh, shuffle the menu on and off to change the lighting of the world, but I think this actually qualifies as cosmetic sad. Because <laughs> how did this even happen? Come on! Oh, we'll put it here. So I've used a timer ball here to represent the insane lag that sometimes happens when you throw a Pokeball, like this! Oh! Whoa! We didn't even catch it! <laughs> Mimikyu's evasiveness rose! And we'll also include all of the general Pokeball jank. So if you throw a Pokeball into a Pokemon that's in water, uh, the refraction of the ball doesn't work properly. And perhaps most obviously, when you catch an airborne Pokemon, the ball just floats. It looks terrible. <laughs> you really can't have gravity applied to the Pokeball? Come on, guys. I think for that reason, this is also a cosmetic sad one. And it happens pretty often? since you're going to be catching a lot of Pokemon. Put it here. And this one's also kind of, kind of abstract. But it is a glitch we did on stream. The state of the game? Okay. Uh, no, this, this trash is not in fact an artist's rendition of the game. That, that's not what I'm trying to say. So this game gives a whole new meaning to vendor trash because the hitboxes are kind of wonky. So there's some trash cans next to a vending machine and you can interact with the trash can and get the vending machine items from there. This is just the stand-in for all of the clumsy hitboxes. 
It also applies to doorways, specifically in the school. You can very clearly not enter the doorway, and then it'll ask if you want to go somewhere. Did anybody test this game? We already know the answer. No. Sad. You'll never guess this Waddle D one, so I I'm just gonna tell you. If you approach a certain starbase cutscene from the ocean, being in deep water reduces your movement speed, and they didn't account for this in the cutscene, so it looks ridiculous. <laughs> You're gonna be doing some waddling. Now, I don't know if this actually crashes your game. If it does, then it should go in game-breaking negative, but if not, it'll go in cosmetic fun. Apparently, it does crash the game, so in that case, probably gonna go here. Right below Falling with Style. Before we do these last two glitches, here is a spoiler warning, because these two require me to show part of the finale of the game. So if you do not want to be spoiled on that, you should probably skip this part of the video. Uh, you have been warned, okay? So at the entrance to the Area Zero lab, something like spawns under the ramp, and you can interact with it. For me, it was a wild, like the Lady Gaga Pokemon, I don't know its real name, Espartha or something. You would just kneel down, and it would like, respond to you with a cry, but you couldn't actually interact with it. But you could see its reflection in the crystals behind the ramp. Very strange. And on the note of crystals, uh, in the final boss encounter, there's some crystals on the wall, and whatever the lighting is with that does not work because it moves with the camera, like independent of the actual shimmering effect that's supposed to happen. It, it, it's really painful on your eyes. I think this one is a cosmetic sad. How did this even happen? Uh, maybe close your eyes during the final boss cutscene so you don't go blind. Put it there. This image is a bit on the nose. Maybe I should say on the ear. This is the audio desync. So one of the final cutscenes has a frame rate that is so bad that the audio desyncs from the video. So the video I'm about to show you has not been edited by me at all. It is not the stream lag. The actual sound desyncs from the cutscene. Please enjoy. Frame rate? Oh, is this a cutscene? Here we go, here we go. Frame rate? Evil Coridon. Frame rate? Oh! Grog! The family reunion, it's happening at 2 FPS. Area zero frame rate. <laughs> Whoa, no way. Whoa, not Agya. Agya, oh, it is Agya. No, something's not right. The game is chugging. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Oh, wow. Oh, high quality animation. What the? That's right. Now, this doesn't just happen in that cutscene. It happens anywhere the frame rate goes to hell, which is most of the game, but it's especially noticeable in that cutscene because, like, what else are you doing? You're just watching the cutscene. So, I think that is actually comparable to the Elite Four music bug because it's just part of a cinematic that just gets ruined by the shoddy performance of the game. And there you have it. This is our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Bugs and Glitches tier list. 46 bugs for only $59.99 US dollars. What a great deal. What are you doing? If you haven't purchased this game yet and you intend to play it, you should probably play it before they fix the bugs because once they do, all that's left is the actual game, which isn't very good at all.